hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the next guitar lesson video with Miss Bronson. It's super good to see each of you as always. So this video is based off of my choral class video that I posted this week. Hopefully you guys have seen it. If not, today's guitar lesson is gonna be based off of the song that I did in that choral class video. So in our time together today, I'm gonna to be going over how to play the chords and the strumming pattern for that song. And if you haven't seen what the song is, I'll go ahead and tell you, it is the song Diamonds by Hawk Nelson. Let's get started. I think it'd be really good for us to review how to properly hold a guitar pick. Some of you might know where I'm going with this because I have many students who will take a guitar pick from Miss Bronson's guitar pick dish. And then as they're playing their guitar, all of a sudden I'll hear a, and then after that I hear, Okay, so let's try to avoid doing that. The worst thing that you could possibly do is spill your guitar picks all on your guitar. Hopefully you don't have a hundred guitar picks like I do, because that would be also helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, hey, I found some more. Oh, I found a few more. Nope. Please, oh, please come out. Uh, oh. I don't recommend doing this at home, by the way. Come on. Almost. Ah! There's still one more in there. How many people have in here? Like, like, it seems like I got a thousand or something. Well, I think I got all of them, so that's good. Where's my guitar? Oh. Well, now that I got all my guitar picks out of my guitar, I think we can finally begin. There's a mess down here. Hmm. Please hold while I clean up this mess. A few moments later. All right, did I get all the picks? I think I did. Oh, how did the pick get all the way over there? Hmm. Are you playing in front of my camera again? No, go on. Shoot, 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 shoot. I told you today was the day I was recording for my guitar students. Well, I appreciate you watching my camera for me, but did you ever think that there were people from the camera watching you? Right. You have no regrets. Okay, that's good. Artie says hi, and that he appreciates each of you putting in so much effort to play such beautiful instruments as it's, as yourself. So to hold your guitar pick in the best way possible, it is important to use three fingers. More specifically, your thumb, your first finger, and your second finger. Sometimes I see people hold it with two fingers. I'm not gonna say that that's wrong, but it does not give you the best grip, which is why some, if not many, of my guitar students, when they play their guitar, it will eventually fall into the sound hole. Here's how you do it. You take like if you're just like, hey, peace, right? You put your fingers together and then you're gonna put the tips of those two fingers on one side of your guitar pick. Okay. And then with your thumb, of course, you're just gonna put it on the back side. Okay, simple as that. Something I want you to keep in mind is I don't want you to hold the tip of it, okay? Not, not, not like that. I don't want you to hold too much of it though to where now you can't hardly see the pick at all, right? That, that's not what we want. The middle of your pick is where I want you to hold those double fingers and your thumb, okay? All right, I wanna address something that you may or may not have noticed in the video that I was using on my guitar to play the song Diamonds. And that was this guy. For my advanced students, you probably know what this is called, right? If you said capo, you're 100% correct, good job. It's spelled C-A-P-O. So some people might think to call it capo, which is oftentimes what I'll say just to be silly about it. I'll say, get your capos out. <laughs> its correct pronunciation is capo, C-A-P-O. Hello, I'm your new teacher, Miss Capo Bronson. I just love to eat picks. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> to give you just a general understanding of what a capo does, we use it to make the guitar sound higher. So say that there was a song that you sang in the key of A, 
and uh, it worked out perfectly for you. And then your friend comes along and says, oh, I want to sing that song. And then they try singing it and they say, oh man, that's way too low for me. Can you make it higher? And you'd be like, I don't, I don't know what other chords to play for it. Like, how do I do that? Um, a really easy alternative is by using the capo. The capo makes it sound higher. So basically, if you were to look at the nut on your guitar, which is this guy right here, okay? The nut is like where the beginning of the sound is, just strum all the strings. It's all happening starting right here. If I were to make my finger like a nut, such as for bar chords, I can make this sound higher, higher. By doing that, I'm essentially using my finger to move the nut up so that the sound of the strings gets higher and higher and higher. Say that you were playing that song in the key of A, okay, and your friend wants you to play it in a higher key, um, say maybe the, the fifth fret worked. Now I want to note that as I put the capo on my guitar, I have it close very close to the fret wire on the right side. So in other words, towards the sound hole. I'm not placing it really close on the fret wire towards the head of the guitar. No, I'm placing it close to the fret wire on the sound hole side of the guitar, okay? So otherwise you might get some buzz and some unwanted sounds in there. We don't want that. So if I were to play the A chord now, that A chord sound a lot higher. Let, let's compare. So we have this and big difference, right? So in the case for the song Diamonds, the way that I played it was that I used my capo and I put it on the fourth fret, okay? If you don't own a guitar capo right now, that's not a problem at all. You can still totally do everything that I'm teaching you in this lesson. Um, the only difference is that without the capo, your guitar will just sound lower. So for instance, if I were to play a G with my capo, okay, and then I take my capo off and I play that G again, yeah, playing it up here and playing it down here, it does sound different, but I didn't play my G chord any differently, right? It, it still was a G up here and it was still a G up here. If you are interested in purchasing a capo and you're not quite sure where to find one, honestly, I think Amazon would be your best bet. They have a large variety of capos on there. They're all very well suited for your acoustic guitar. There's also a couple other options as well, such as Musician's Friend, Guitar Center, Z Sounds, Music and Art Center. So there's a lot of options out there. And honestly, all you're looking for is just a six string acoustic guitar capo. So let's get down to it. I have my capo on the fourth fret. And one of the things that I personally like to do before I play any music with a capo is to make sure that my capo is on correctly. I like to particularly test my sixth string and my first string. Okay, they both sound clear. If it sounds something a little, not quite right, I'm gonna wanna adjust that to, okay. No buzzes, no plunk sounds, you know, I want a nice, clean, clear sound. Additionally, I wanted to mention real quick that in the description box below this video, um, I went ahead and put a few things in there. The first thing you'll see is a link that will provide you with a free copy of the sheet music, which has the chords and the lyrics for this song. Ask your parents for, for permission to print that out. You can have yourself a hard copy and you can uh, go ahead and work with me in this video with our song. If not, don't worry, you'll still be fine. I'll provide the chords in the video. You'll also see some strum patterns underneath that link and that'll be used for a reference later on in this video. So be sure to keep that description box open if you would like like to use any of those things. So now let's begin by learning how to play the verses of diamonds. It's super easy. All you do is play the G chord. Let's take a closer look at what that G chord looks like. All right, so you play the G chord throughout the entire verse until you get to the pre-chorus. And the pre-chorus is a part of the song where it's like, oh, I hear it transitioning into something else. We're going into something else now of the song. Where is it taking us? It's taking you to the chorus. So the pre-chorus goes like this. After you're playing that G in the verse, the pre-chorus goes to an E minor. 
then we go to the C chord next. And then quickly change to the G chord again. And then we go to the D chord. So with that, let's play the first verse as well as the pre-chorus together. We'll go nice and slow. G chord. for it. Then we go to the D chord for sure. Treasure. Treasure. Alright, let's put all that together. See what we got. Still nice and slow, but we're going to play it a bit more fluidly without the pauses. Okay, here we go. Here and now I'm in the fire in above my C, then to G, then to D, back to G, to C, to G, So you're all set up for that. So let's uh, go over that chorus together with some, some singing now. Feel free to sing along with me, by the way, if you want to sing and play at the same time. So let's start off with the C chord. So we've got C. He's making diamonds. We go to the G. And we say diamonds, and it's D. Diamonds. G. Diamonds. He's making C diamonds G out of D dust. He is re C my G mean and is D time E minor mean. He's making C diamonds D So let's try playing it more fluidly together. No pauses, but still nice and slow. Follow along with the chords that I'm putting up on the screen for you. We're going to start off with the C chord. Let's play the chorus together. Here we go. He's making diamonds.
And again, if you need to attempt this a couple more times, feel free to back up this video and do just that. Otherwise, good job to you because you just learned the most difficult part of the song. The thing that's going to trip you up though, and I've always said this to all of my students, that includes you, is when you're playing chords, if you don't have them memorized, that's really, really gonna make this a lot harder on you. And when I mean by memorize, it's not only memorizing what it looks like on your chord sheet, how to play the chord, but also memorizing how it feels on your guitar, right? Because I could play a, a chord right now, the G chord, playing it on my guitar without looking at it. I could play the D without looking at it. The C, A, E, F, right? All of those chords I could play without looking at my guitar because I have them memorized. So I challenge you, memorize those chords, memorize how to play it without looking at your fingers. So I first wanna say, in the bridge, we sing that section where it's, Oh, the joy of the Lord, it will be my strength. When the pressure is on, he's making diamonds. Okay, so we sing that a total of four times, okay? For the first two times, you just simply hold on the G chord. Okay, so let's do that together. We'll do the first two times together with just the G chord because that's all that you do, all right? Here we go. Oh, the joy of the Lord will be my strength when the pressure is on, he's making diamonds. Oh, the joy of the Lord, it will be my strength when the pressure is on, he's making diamonds. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the third time that we sing it. This time, you switch to the C chord as an accent for the word diamonds. So watch, we go like this. Oh, the joy of the Lord, it will be my strength. When the pressure is on, he's making diamonds. Okay? In this fourth and final time of singing that phrase in this bridge, we do the Oh, the joy of the Lord, it will be my strength. When the pressure is on, he's making, he's making, he's making. And then you go into the chorus. But before we do wrap this up, as far as chords goes, let's play through that bridge all one time through. Here we go. Oh, the joy of the Lord, strum patterns now. Congratulations on getting this far. I'm going to show you the basic way of playing it first and then the advanced way of playing it. But it, regardless, this is going to take a little bit of practice if you're not familiar with strum patterns already. For especially my new guitar students, don't worry about mastering this right now. What I want you to focus on is the chord. So the basic way first I'm going to show you for doing this shuffle strum, you go like this. there's some accents in there. If I were not putting any accents, that sounds kind of not as great as it could sound. <laughs> but with the accents, it really makes a difference. So when you do that strum, you're going to give it one hard strum down and then a softer strum up. So you have you got that hard, soft, down, up, 
So you have your down part, soft up. When you go to the next part, I give it a hard strum on the top. So like my sixth, fifth, and fourth strings. Okay, that's gonna be my next accent. Okay, so we have hard down, soft up. Now you go hard down, but only heavy on the, the top strings. You're not gonna strum all of them. You're just gonna do a, see what I mean? Okay, so we have, When you do it, you go down hard, up soft, down hard on the top strings, but don't go up again. That's not what we're doing next. After you go hard on the top strings, you're gonna go hard again on all of the strings. So you're doing down hard, soft up, hard on the top strings, hard on all the strings. There's also a bit of a pause there if you notice. Again. I'll do it slower so you can practice a little bit with me. Let's do it slow. Okay, so for the rest of the strum, hard down, soft up. Hard at the top, down. Hard all the way down with a soft up. Okay, so let's build that together. Here we go. So we're almost there. So now after you have that, you just repeat what I taught you a second ago. You go hard down, soft up, hard at the top, hard all the way down, soft up, hard at the top, and hard all the way down. So, so far you got part of it all right let's do it so that shuffle is simply regular strums and I know you end with a down strum already but you're gonna have to do another down strum so it's gonna be three down strums in a row when you get towards the end of this pattern so that shuffle part is simply a regular strum down a regular strum up but then you come back all the way at the top and go hard down times so that you can kind of catch on and practice to it uh, yourself with me okay so here we go So I'll go ahead and show you what the palm mute is all about. About the palm mute, you have okay. With the palm mute, you have so let's first review how to palm mute. Your hand should already be over the sound hole, okay? And should slap the strings okay and at the same time it slaps the strings you should be strumming down on the strings but fast like this fast can you do that so slap scratch it's a palm mute all right so let's get into it so for our strum you go hard down and you 
go regular up. It doesn't have to be soft this time, but you can go regular up. So hard down, regular up, and then you palm mute after that. Okay, and then after that, there's just one extra step. You play hard at the top, okay? And then after that, you do another palm mute. Okay, so in that second section, it should sound like this. Hard down, regular up, hard at the top, mute. So again, it should be. Okay, so, so far we have the two sections we're gonna put together. So the first section doesn't have that hard at the top part. Okay, so we just go like this. Again, that is. So now let's learn the shuffle part of this. Okay, so it's much the same as in the basic version as well. Um, all you're gonna do is regular down, regular up. That's it. So let's kind of piece together what we've learned so far. So the first section was hard down, regular up, palm mute. The second section was hard down, regular up, hard at the top, palm mute. And the last section was regular down, regular up. So then when you replay this, you're going to start with the hard down. So let's piece this together. Okay, I'm going to play it through a few times so that you can get used to how it sounds. Try playing with me. Okay, I'm going to go nice and slow from the beginning. In this version of the song that Miss Bronson did, you've learned the chords, the chord progression. You've learned a basic and an advanced version of the strum pattern. You guys are all set to go. The last thing to do is print out that hard copy, write down those strum patterns, practice it on your own, and return to this video as many times as necessary. I encourage you to do that. Even if it is a little bit of a challenge, try whatever you know you can try for starters, wherever you're at. If the strum pattern is a little bit difficult, hold off on the strum pattern. Get the chords down first, memorize those first, and then build up to the strum pattern. And the fact that you're able to play these chords and notes and have a strum pattern and all of those great, wonderful things, that takes skill and you have it. God has gifted you with that ability and I love seeing how you can use it to glorify Him through such as a worship song like we're doing right now together. Try it, I know you're gonna have a lot of fun with it. Can't wait to see you in the next guitar video. Until then, Ms. Bronson signing off. Have a great day, God bless.